Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Meet the Candidates. Welcome. I'm your host tonight, Paul Jr., and we have a great episode lined up for you with a great guest. Uh, without further ado, let's get him in here. Brother William, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing great. Good. That's great to hear, especially in this day and age. I don't know about you, but I've been dealing with the pollen falling from the maple trees and the apple trees. My allergies have been really kicking me in the behind lately. Uh, I actually just transferred climates. I was in sunny Nashville, Tennessee. Now I'm back in Flint and it's a little rainy and cold. So it's an adjustment. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, you went from the south back to the north. I got you. You know, I, I, yeah, that's a big change, especially with food, culture, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Flint, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But to be honest, I missed the winter. I wanted the snow. I wanted to be out there, but uh, all I got was a little sleet and some hailstorms. See, and that's honestly. Really, that's how I feel. I've had a lot of my friends move out west when they graduated from high school and college, um, California, some moved down to Texas. And, you know, it's funny because I'm from the reverse side, I'm from Texas and I moved up to Michigan. Mm. And I'm like, mm, I'm not giving up my winters. I like my snow. I mean, everything is pretty during the winter time. I mean, there's nothing that's ugly when snow falls. I mean, yeah, it turns black and brown afterwards, but when it's fresh, yeah, Looks you can't be pristine on Christmas. Yeah, I, I definitely get that. It's nice. It's just, how do you have Christmas without snow? It's like, the beach is cool to be on the water. That's nice, but that's a summer thing. It's all about the hot cocoa and being by the fire and warming up. You know what I mean? I mean, thank you. I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, the winter time is, you know, you know, for you and your significant other. You know, provides chances to hug up, get close, cuddle. Snuggle you know. season. Yeah, it's yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> 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 That's exactly right. And you know what? This one of the many highlighting attributes that I can honestly say that I've really come to love about Michigan. Nice. So I heard you say you were originally from Houston. You moved up here to Flint. And now you're running for office. How did, what made you feel that you needed to put your foot in this arena? Well, you know what? And it's crazy that you said that I graduated from Carmen Ainsworth in uh, 2004. And the class motto was give me a place to stand and I will move the earth. And, and it's funny because really that model has really stuck with me basically my entire life and i honestly figured that it's time for me to not only take a stand but to stand on some things and start getting the ball moving forward or you know making a change within the community and the society and to show even that you know hey millennials you know not only are we politically motivated and politically activated. But, you know, it's not just for show. It's because we really want to see things moving in the right direction. That's well said. Do you think... I agree that it's on millennials to step up, but do you also think, how do you think that transition goes from millennials to Gen X and maybe even some Gen Y's left in there? You know, now, it, I'm sorry, not Y, but uh, are they baby boomers before X? Yeah, baby bo after X is baby boomers. Yeah. You know, it's, you know what, it, it, it's, it's interesting because in this day and age, you still have about four generations still living. So you still have a lot of the greatest generation who fought during World War II that are still living. Um, you still then have, you have like my, uh, uh, my stepfather's generation, uh, which are, they call the, the silence that's from anybody born during the great depression. They're still alive. Then you got the baby boomers. Then you got the, 
Then you've got the Gen Xers, which are latchkey kids, millennials, then Y, Z, and so it's so many. But I think what it is is it's just it's just not only just millennials stepping up, but it's millennials coming forward to try to bridge through all of those things because um, I'm the millennial where my grandfather fought during World War II. So I know a lot of millennials can't say that, but my grandfather fought during World War II. So my connection with the greatest generation is there and just trying, my mother's a baby boomer. And, you know, a lot my brothers are basically Gen Xers, but it's, you know, trying to find not only continuity, but trying to weave your way and connect all generations so that nobody feels left out. And I think that's the key thing here is that nobody feels left out from the greatest generation who fought in World War II all the way down to the 18-year-olds who are just now starting to come and get registered and seeing all of the activity that's going on, not only in the country, but also in the world. That makes sense. And definitely you got to find a common ground to the, uh, bridge the gap. But do you have any kids, I guess, or younger family members to get the youth's perspective? Because I heard the older side, you know what I'm saying? You know what? It's, you know, it, it's funny, because it's funny because in the millennial group, they're really two different sides. And you have the millennials that were born in the 80s, whose parents are mostly baby boomers. Then you got the millennials who were born in the 90s, whose parents are basically Gen Xers. So, you know, it's it's interesting to see where the millennials fall at with trying to engage younger people and saying, hey, it's more than just talk. It's about actually being active, not only in your community, but it's about voting. It's about um, joining in with your neighborhood organizations and your associations and getting to know your neighbors, you know, who are next door to you. I live in a community. It's funny that you say that I live in a community for the longest time. You know, I, I, when I moved in there, we moved in and I was 14. So it wasn't a lot of young people. Now we got a neighborhood that's full of young people. And so it gives us the opportunity to make a difference and to sow seeds in young people's lives that, you know, never thought that they could aspire to something higher. Okay. And that's true. We all need role models. I just worry that sometimes this labeling between millennials, Gen Z's, and baby boomers, it gets away from the idea that it's on all of us. We like segment it into, oh, you guys didn't do enough. Oh, now it's on us. You know what I mean? It's like a blame game when we need to just all come together as one group and just be like, here's the problems in our community. How do we solve them as a community? Absolutely. I completely agree. It's, you know, I think it was created as, as a sign of identity as identifying with the generations. But at this point of time, you know, it's time to remove barriers. It's time to remove walls and things of that nature. And like you said, really become one. So it doesn't matter that this gentleman who lives two doors down from me fought in World War II. He's my neighbor. And if he needs help, we should be able to help him. And it doesn't make any difference to the person who might be 22, 23 years old who just moved into a home next to me. You know, we have to understand that, you know, yeah, we may all be different ages. We may all come from different backgrounds, but the, we all have the same goal in mind. And that same goal is to be unified in order to build not only the Eighth Ward, but the city of Flint as a whole. And that's really one of the things that drives me is to bring Con, um, con, um, excuse me, continuity in unity with other people in bridging that gap. Okay. So what specifically in the eight war do you think can be promoted or could be used at, on your platform for that purpose? Well, 
for instance, um, on a unity on a unity transport on a unity purpose is um, black. That's one thing. Um, in the eighth ward is starting to uh, grow and creep up and things of that nature. And so really just all of us getting in there, whether it's picking up a bottle on the street, whether it's going and trying to clean up a vacant lot that's there where a house used to be, you know, it's that breeds unity. Also, another thing is, is that the eighth ward really lacks parks, you know, and recreational uh, facilities for all generations, all age groups, all manner of people to just come and to enjoy. And so that's another thing that we could bring unity together on. I hear that. And that and recreation is needed for all age groups. So that's definitely a great idea, you know, to push for. Um, and reusing some of those old elementary schools and some of those old high schools in the area are definitely perfect spots. I mean, it's going to take some money because those the infrastructure is in bad shape, but uh, it's not a bad way to start. You know what I mean? I can, I can, um, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Like, um, man, like, what, el what like else general. in the eighth war? So you're, you're saying uh, a lack of recreation, but is there anything else that you think makes the eighth ward special and something that really needs to be kind of vocalized in the council room that hasn't been vocalized yet? Well, keeping the eighth ward really a residential ward. If you if you look at if you look at the diagram of uh, of Flint and you see the makeup of it, the eighth ward is really um, residential. It's more residential than it has businesses. And so really that's the focus that you know needs to be highlighted in the council in the council room is that eighth ward, yes, is a resident ward, but it's to build Flint as a whole and 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 to for that make and for that model. And that is, is the restoration of our neighborhoods. Okay. So, uh, the past post G, like, so the post G, uh, GM Flint, where we have now these college students kind of integrate, and now we have these retirees integrating. And then we also have kind of at the same time this exodus of people because of the water crisis. But Absolutely. now investments coming in and people are scooping up properties. So it's an interesting time for sure, uh, especially in residence areas, because I feel like the culture is changing and shifting at this moment. Absolutely. Um, you know what? It's, it's funny that you say that because um, in the city of Houston, where I grew up, Houston went through the same thing. Houston um, was once a, a gas and oil town. And when OPEC came into being, a lot of businesses closed up. And so Houston found themselves in the exact same situation. And so they had to reinvent themselves and eventually, as you can see, um, Houston is one of the fastest growing cities in the nation. Yes, it's the fourth largest, but it's also uh, a multiplicity of things that are going on. And so uh, Flint, it, it's, it's really time for Flint because we know the days of GM are behind us. But, you know, it's acknowledging your past and the greatness of your past, but moving forward. And so that's in creating businesses for jobs. So the eighth ward does have some business corridors. So what are the kind of businesses that will attract entrepreneurship from these people, from the younger people that are lead and graduating from the University of Michigan, that are graduating from Kettering, from Mott University and things of that nature? I want to be able to give them an area to where if they want to build um, a business for designing homes, or designing car parts, they don't have to go to Detroit. They don't have to go to Pontiac. They can be right here in the city of Flint doing those things. You know, uh, it's funny because the company, I use, I work for um, Diplomat Pharmacy. Diplomat Pharmacy um, merged with United Healthcare a, a couple of years ago. Diplomat Pharmacy was a small, was a small entity in the, in the city of Flint. Before the merger, the um, Diplomat Pharmacy was grossing $5.5 billion. 
and mm. was helping over 70 to 75,000 people with specialty medications. And then we're not even talking about the pharmacy that they had on Beecher Road that was still helping people from the citizens of Flint. So it's those kind of goals and those kind of ideas that we want people to understand and to have them to grow like, hey, please don't leave. We need you here because Flint is up and coming. Yeah. So retention of these graduates so they can pro not not only the growth of their own business, but in turn, help grow the economy in Flint at the same time. Correct. And then think about it. You know, when you have when you have more jobs, you're able to pull from different areas of the country. And the more jobs you have, the more people that move to your city. So the more residents you have, the more residents you have, the more of a tax base that you have. The more tax base that you have, the more money that's flowing in, not only to the eighth ward, but only into the city to help to further establish and build the plans for community development and involvement. That makes sense to me. Uh, this is a good conversation. I just it don't is. know where I want to go from here. <laughs> do we keep it light or do we keep diving deep? How are you feeling? It's up to you. Uh, well, let's get into something that everybody on everybody's mind in Flint, um, water crisis. Yes. Steps moving forward. We're seven years and counting in. There's been a lot of donations of water and things as far as like trying to purify water. But I feel like sectors like education, overall healthy eating and um, exercise and things like that have been overlooked. So how do we get that into the conversation as these new monies get distributed? Well, for instance, whether you know it or not, the water crisis really uh, brought a good, a good shift to the city of Flint. Was it a negative thing that happened? Sure it was. But the positive thing was that it pulled the city and its residences together. I mean, there was no division. There was no north side, no south side. No, I'm from first ward. I'm from eighth ward. I'm from um, fifth ward. No, we all drank the water. We all suffered together. So one of the things that um, were, it made us one. So one of the things that came out were that uh, community development and organizations like um, the um, the, oh, it's right there on the tip of my tongue, the Roger L. Jones Community Outreach Center out in uh, Third Ward. Um, when they started, they started doing the water crisis, nothing. Now today, they're feeding over 10,000 people. They have a closed closet and they offer free amenities to people that, you know, that are in need. And so going forward at greater holy temple that's the church where i belong to so mm -hmm. going forward those are the things that i want to see coming out of the water crisis is more community involvement and more community development because we have a lot of hurting people we have a lot of struggling people we have a lot of um, families who had minors that drank the water so yes education is going to be a plus and it's going to be needed it's going to be ramp, um it's got to be ramped up and it's got to be more strategically modernized to where it meets the individual in their struggle so when i drank the water i was already an adult but when you're five years old and you drink the water and your brain is still developing you know you're not going to have the cognitive skills and the resources that I normally would have where I could catch things easier, they may not have. So what does that mean? That means that we need to develop a community as a whole to understand that kind of a mindset. But it's not a hindrance, it's a way for us to really move forward. Um, more schools like um, Educare, ages three to five years old that get down on the ground level and to really work and develop the children and with their mental skills, their cognitive skills, their speech. Like for instance, um, we teach, like for instance, I was watching on YouTube 
in 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 um in Europe, they teach their kids not only to read, but they teach them to speak at the same time. So what does that mean? So that means that instead of just identifying that red is red, I know how to spell red, R-E-D, at two years old. Not only do I can identify what an apple is, at two years old, I can spell an apple, A-P-P-L-E. So it's those kind of things that we have to really start looking into um, to, 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 um, to make us not only one, but to help out the community. Right. And we're going to need a lot of that because lead can be passed on to your kids. You know what I'm saying? We're talking like a multi-generational problem that we're going to have in Flint. So we're going to need some outside of the box thinking to take care of this and get our children right. You know what I mean? I agree. And then, you know what, also, Paul, this is where it comes in also for job creation. Here, I, I, I hate to cut you off, but uh, we got to get into closing thoughts. So can you make it quick? Yeah, sure. So real quick. So right as you were saying, we need those mom and pop stores and we need those people that are going to be graduating from universities with new thoughts and ideas to build the businesses and the jobs so that to so that on on the level for the learning curve that these kids are going to have because like you said it's a multi-generational effect mm -hmm. well brother william it's been a great episode thank you I've had a good feel for you. I hope the audience gets has gotten a good feel for you. Um, and good luck in your endeavors uh, for city council. Thank you, Paul. Listen, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me on this afternoon. Um, not only did it give me a, a, a time to highlight a, just a portion of my platform, but it really allowed me to speak from my heart. My heart is unity. I know it's an old saying, unity in the community, mm -hmm. but it's true. We all need to be one. It's time for us to be one, and it's time for us to move city, move forward, the city of Flint, forward as one. Great closing comments. And with that, y'all, there will be more after this. WFOV 92.1 LPF in Flint may cause one to think, may cause sleeplessness, agitation, motivation, and a strong desire to get involved. In rare cases, some may experience euphoria, a sense of community, and a relief of futility. Some listeners have reported in-depth, informed conversations, a better understanding of diversity, and a strong desire to get along. Be warned that programming on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint is not for the feeble-minded or those prone to intolerance, prejudice, and or bigotry. Before ingesting WFOV 92.1 LPFM content, listeners are advised to seek the advice of community advocates, activists, and supporters. That said, please enjoy Be Heard, Our Voices Radio, WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint.